Hey, pilots! Drain Man here, and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to check out this KISS 4-in-1 ESE. I had it on my quad, I was doing my thing, it broke, I stopped doing my thing. Well, normally we just throw them away, but not with Drain Man. I'm going to show you guys how to repair your 4-in-1. Go ahead and kick this tester into continuity, and we are going to find out if this thing is short-circuited. All right, if you've got a beep, that means it's no good. Okay, pilot, so I'm going to pull out my little vise. This is a non-conductive vise. I got it on Amazon. If you're interested, I will put it down in the video description. Just that way you have a link, so if you want to get one, you can. So now I'm going to throw the 4-in-1 into the vise so that it will be held secure. I see guys use all kinds of stuff, even down to putty, so feel free to use whatever you want. So you'll see a six-pack of caps right here. These caps is what I believe has shorted on here. So I'm going to use a little bit of solder. There is multiple methods to getting these caps off, but I'm just going to use a little solder and I'm going to try to rip them off. And if my short goes away, then I know I've got the problem. We'll put new caps on and we'll be done. If I take them off and the short doesn't go away, well, then I'm going to continue looking for the culprit. Oh, man, I thought we had it this time. I guess the short is still present. We're going to go ahead and give it another shot. I'm going to pull this capacitor right here, and we'll see. Hopefully, it'll make a difference. In the process of pulling this capacitor, you can see I kind of made a mess with the solder. So I'm going to use a little bit of solder wick. I'm going to soak up some of that excess solder. If you don't know what solder wick is, go ahead and get yourself some. It's extremely cheap and it's extremely helpful. And after I clean it up with a little bit of uh, alcohol, we're going to go ahead and check again and see if we got the short. Well, that's not looking good at all. Let's take off more caps. I don't know where this short is, but I thought we had it on the first cap. But we're going to continue to take off more. I hope we don't end up taking them all off or even find out that the short is somewhere else. I've tested it and I've pretty much uh, narrowed it down to here. So we're going to continue and hopefully we'll have it soon. That soldering wick is extremely helpful. I don't know if you've ever had to use it or not, but I've been in some sticky situations. And if I brush over it like you just saw here... It really, really does make a difference. Now, as always, I hit it with some alcohol, get everything nice and clean. You want to make sure that there's no beads of solder laying around or anything like that. Man, we are really not having any luck with this one. No matter what we do or how many caps we take off, we just can't get it. I'm going to go ahead and just pull the rest of these three caps off. I'm not doing one at a time with these last three. I want to just get to the bottom of this short. I want you to be careful if you're doing this. You can't be too rough. you got to let the tool do its job. Let the heat run through it. Let the solder melt down. you got to understand from the factory, there's a lot less lead inside of the solder so it doesn't heat up as quickly. Let it heat up and do its thing. All right, so with all three caps off, I'm going to give it a quick cleanup, and then we're going to test it again and see if our short is still present. All right, pilots, right here you'll see that I've removed all six capacitors, and this thing is still got a short. So I'm going to start over here with these six, but I'm going to do the same thing I did. I'm not just going to rip them all off. I'm going to do one at a time, but instead of using solder and the soldering iron, I'm going to slap some flux on it, and I'm going to use the heat gun, 
and then I'll be able to pull them off without fiddling around like we just did a little bit at a time and then some solder wick and then clean it with the alcohol and then repeat and rinse and blah 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 so warm your whole board up make sure you're not just heating one spot warm it up equally and then once you've got it all warmed up you've got it nice and hot then you kind of zoom in like you see here and focus on your target component and then you can remove that component what I do is I kind of hold it with the tweezers until it finally breaks free oh yeah and as you can see here we finally got the short that one capacitor was our problem and as you can see sometimes you just can't give up super easy you got to try to fight for it you got to earn it and what you do is you just keep on trucking until you finally get it with my scenario or this scenario it actually took us seven capacitors to finally get it now it's time to cool it down we also got to clean it up so I took some alcohol I put it here on an acne pad which I know you can use cotton balls and q-tips and all that other stuff and I still use q-tips but with these acne pads I get less of that frayed cotton that gets all over the board I mean you still get it but it's just not as bad and they hold a lot of alcohol so I can also drizzle it on and give a nice scrub clean don't be shy the alcohol won't hurt the components it's actually made to handle it and after you got her all wet and clean don't be afraid to hit it with a toothbrush either because that'll get in there and get all that stuff that you missed plus like we said earlier you don't want to leave behind any solder blobs those can be fatal now once you've got it all cleaned up and ready to go the very next thing we want to do is we want to throw it on the bench and then we want to put the bench supply on it and that's what I'm going to do here and I'm not going to put a lot of voltage I mean 10 volts 15 volts is fine it is a 6s capable ESC so we could put up to 25 volts but we don't need that for testing we just want to see if our LEDs are communicating and letting us know that we have fixed the board and that the board is actually working because we had a short that doesn't mean that was our only problem but as you can see here by the four LEDs one for each ESC because it is a foreign one that the LEDs are letting us know that this thing is up and running and accepting the voltage and that is such a beautiful feeling to come this far and know that you've actually fixed it I feel around on the board I don't feel anything getting hot everything feels good looks good now the question is do we put the capacitors back on do we risk damaging the board do we go through all that hard work or do we just solder on an external capacitor because we can we can just solder on an external capacitor one that will do twice as much uh, good as putting these back on but no we are not taking the easy way out we've come this far we are going to put on all the SMD capacitors that we took off we are going to get some new ones and we are going to put them on so now we need to pick our capacitor we need to put the right one back that belongs here when you're talking about capacitors you got to have the correct farad or micro farad there is one million micro farads to every one farad and there is one thousand millifarads to every one farad these capacitors here are ceramic capacitors and ceramic capacitors are actually done in very small sizes when we're talking about SMD they're usually an 0402 or they're an 0805 which are very very small and there's many other types of capacitors you have aluminum capacitors tantalum capacitors super capacitors they go on and on we are not going to focus on those we are just going to focus on what we're looking for and that right now is a ceramic capacitor so i've got a full book here that's got tons and tons of capacitors and it's easy to screw that up when you're talking about capacitors it is safe to always go over because when a capacitor is given a size that is its maximum voltage or its maximum current that is what it can handle so that is what they put on there if you go under that or you cut it too close you can burst that capacitor and then you're back in the same boat that we were just in that quite possibly is what happened to this board here all right that's enough rambling from the plumber who's not a capacitor specialist what we are doing now is we are putting on what's called solder paste and solder paste is actually basically it's just a flux with little tiny solder balls in it and it doesn't create anything until you heat it up 
and once you heat it up, the flux will melt and all the solder balls will come together and then you'll literally have solder. So if you're not familiar with solder paste, you're really going to enjoy this because this stuff is too cool. And if you are some type of electrical engineer, then you already know all about this and you're probably not even watching this. So what I've got here is I've got six capacitors that need to go on. Well, I could put a little bit of solder on each and every one and then I can, you know, heat them up and put them on one by one. Or I can just slap the whole pads covered in solder paste, drop on my six, heat it up and be good to go. The hardest part when soldering like this or trying to put on SMD components with a heat gun and solder paste is trying to focus and make sure that they all come together properly. It's all gonna happen very fast and once your solder paste reaches that correct temperature, it's going to just become solder and then if you screwed up, you are SOL. So as you can see here, I'm applying the heat and you're gonna watch it turn into solder and come together. It's one of the coolest things ever. And you've got to act quick. If you need to adjust them or move them, make sure you do that quickly. But don't be too abrupt because you'll just knock them right off and then you're back in square one. As you'll see here, they are heating up. The flux is getting hot. I'm doing my best with my left hand to move around the tweezers and get the caps in the right spot while applying the heat, but trying to keep in mind that I don't use too much heat. I don't want to smoke anything. After they're all said and done, we're ready to rock and roll. We literally have a KISS 4-in-1 ready to go. I am missing one other capacitor, and that's okay. The board will be okay without it. I'll go ahead and just run a external capacitor, which I would have done anyways. I'm going to go ahead and test the board one last time and make sure that I don't have any continuity, I don't have any more short circuits, and that everything is running and looking and working the way that it's supposed to. I had a lot of fun repairing this board with you guys. I hope that you guys did too. As you'll see, the short circuit is gone and the caps are back on. They're not the prettiest, but we are back in action. I hope you guys had a good time. I did too. I'll see you on the next one.